called John Rawls, and he was a professor at Harvard University. I think he's the first person in 1970 to actually figure out what the word justice means. I'm here to talk about what his theory of justice was. People have been thinking about what is justice since the time when Jesus Christ was around. This book has been very influential in our modern day society. It's how I'd like to think of myself one day as a lawyer, as an officer of the law, as someone who's trying to help keep justice in society, promote justice, that one day I can say to the Lord that I will have a crown of righteousness. Hello. Some of you might have seen me before. I'm Ilsen Han. I'm a member of the board of directors here at Juniper Christian School. I've been friends with our <clears throat> principal, Pastor Minho Lee, for quite some time now. And I've seen this school since its inception. And it's good to always be back here. I work as an international lawyer here in Seoul. And I deal with international cases in international trade, international disputes, uh, corporate mergers and acquisitions, if you know what that means, well, you'll get to one day. Today I want to, Pastor Lee asked me to talk about justice and what that means. It's a word we use quite often without really knowing what it means, and that's the same for adults and scholars and lawyers and judges and police people. We use this word a lot, but we don't really think about what it means. And that's not uncommon because actually the concept of justice was not really clear even in philosophy just until a few years ago. About 30 years ago, there was this very famous scholar called John Rawls, and he was a professor at Harvard University. And we think he's the first person in 1970 to actually figure out what the word justice means. And I'm here to talk about what his theory of justice was and why we think it's probably the most accurate one to this day, and we still use it today. So what is justice? We hear this word a lot. So let's say John <clears throat> and Mary are having a pizza together. And we want to cut this pizza so everyone's happy. So let's say John cuts the pizza because, well, someone has to cut the pizza. And then John cut it like this. And then what if John chooses pizza one. Then Mary has to get pizza two. And that doesn't seem right because John got to cut the pizza and then he got to choose the one first. So of course he's going to choose the bigger one. And Mary, she doesn't have a choice and she has to stay with pizza two. So that doesn't seem fair. So basically justice is what we think of as being fair or not fair, right? So that's not fair. Pizza one, pizza two, big pizza, small pizza. But John gets to cut it and John gets to pick first. And generally everyone will think that's not fair. So what happens, same thing. John cut the pizza, but he didn't cut it right. He cut one big and one small. But what if then Mary gets to choose first? Then Mary gets to choose pizza one, and John gets to choose pizza two. So then what happens now? So Mary's happy, yeah. But is John sad? Well, John's not very sad because 
he can't blame anyone. He, he cut the pizza. He cut the pizza wrong. And so he's stuck with the result. He, he can accept it because that's, that's, he made the rules and just Mary followed the rules. So that seems more fair than what happened here, right? This is when only John is happy, Mary's sad, but now John's okay, Mary's still happy. So now we're getting a little bit closer to justice. So now, next time what happens when Mary and John have to have a pizza again? Then John thinks last time I cut it wrong and then Mary's going to choose first again, and she's going to choose the bigger one, and I'm going to get the smaller one. So John now tries really hard to cut the pizza in half, so that even if Mary gets to choose pizza one, he'll still have the same pizza two. So that's, now we're both happy, and this is what people think is quite fair. So number pizza half and half, we think is most fair, most justice. Pizza two, where John gets to cut it, but Mary gets to choose first. That's almost as good, quite fair justice. And we think John getting to cut the pizza and John getting to choose the pizza first is the least fair or unfair or not just. Okay, so, then there's this problem. Which is better? John gets one pizza, Mary gets one pizza. And there, that's fair, that's quite fair. But then what if John gets six pizzas and Mary gets two pizzas? Well, then it gets a little bit trickier. I would rather have two pizzas than one pizza, even if John gets six instead of just having one each. So why, why do some people have six pizzas and why do some have two pizzas? Well, it's because in the real world, we have rich people and poor people and strong people and weak people and smart people, and not as smart people. So that's why some people end up with six pizzas, and some people have two pizzas. And that's just, we, everyone knows that's how the, how the world is. But why did it become this way? So let's summarize what we talked about today. So Professor John Rawls thought of what is justice, and he came up with his theory of what justice is, and Rule number one, if we can, equal is best. If we can, we split the pizza equally or as equally as possible. If we have friends and we have 10 candies, then we give each one one candy. But sometimes that's not possible because some people are stronger or weaker and some people get more candies. So rule number two, it's okay for some people to have more pizzas and less pizzas, but only if the people who have more pizzas can help the people get a little bit more pizza. So John, four pizzas, Mary gets two pizzas. And rule number three, but who gets four and who gets two? And when we pick who gets four, who gets two, who gets the big house, who gets the small house, who gets to go to good university, and who doesn't get to go to a good university. We can't have other factors that we cannot control, like racism or privilege or gender, get in the way. So everyone should have the same chance to get the four pizzas. And so that's what we learned about today. And that's what Professor John Rawls wanted to teach us. And this book has been very influential in our modern day society. All 
Western governments or all modern governments, they make their societies around this rule in this book. And this is how we pick our leaders. This is how we tax people who are richer than us so that then we can use that money to help the poor people get more pizzas. And so this book has basically shaped the way we think about society and government and our fellow neighbors. So I hope you all get to read it one day and I hope you can keep continuing to have it to in interest in law and philosophy and these humanitarian subjects so that maybe when you go to university one day you will consider them as a major and many of you will become lawyers like I am, and we will keep help making justice in society. So I'd like to end with one Bible verse, which is my favorite. It's my favorite Bible verse, and let me read it for you. It's 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. And it was written by Apostle Paul, and it was when he was a little bit older, and towards the end of his life and he said I have fought the good fight I have finished the race I have kept the faith now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge will award me to me on that day and not only to me but also to all who have longed for his appearing so Apostle Paul, when he was old and about to die, he looked back on his life and he, he thought, I've done God's work and I've fought the good fight and I've, I've I kept on doing the marathon. I didn't stop, didn't give up. And that's how I'd like to think of myself one day as a lawyer as an officer of the law, as someone who's trying to help keep justice in society, promote justice, that one day I can say to the Lord that I will have a crown of righteousness because I was, I tried to be righteous and I tried to keep justice in society and that was my job. So I finished the race that the Lord has given me. And so I also hope some of you can also join in this race, this fight, the good fight that the Lord has given us so that we can have the crown of righteous, righteousness one day in the Lord. So amen. amen. Thank you all for listening and thank you all for watching. And I hope all the best for you and your studies. And until we meet again, well, peace, in, peace in Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.